Okay, so the Bank of England have just cut interest rates for the first time in four years. A 5-4 split in the voting has caused a cautious but marginal rate cut from 5.25% to 5%. This is really hopeful news for homeowners in order to bring mortgage rates down, but could this just be the start of a big change in interest rates to come? Well, with a very cautiously positioned Monetary Policy Committee report that came out earlier today, it doesn't exactly scream like there's going to be substantial rate cuts coming in quick succession anytime soon. However, having said that, the longer term outlook does indeed look positive. So I thought we could take a quick look at the report together and some of the core risk factors at play, which could mean that interest rates don't come down as quick as perhaps some of us would like. Let's take a look at the summary, which if I'm honest, I'm a little bit conflicted as to how they came to their decision given the outlook they've provided. But let's start off with the inflation topic. It sets out by talking about that kind of 2% bank of England target inflation rate, which of course has now been achieved based on CPI data for the last couple of months. But we'll talk about what the true inflation figures are in just a moment's time because they're extremely important to consider. The report goes on to reference that they expect inflation to rise again to 2.75% in the second half of the year, despite inflation coming back under control in line with target in the last few months. And that's as a result of the way in which the Bank of England report inflation data over a 12 month period. As the data from this time last year falls off, essentially a new set of data comes into the equation. The Bank of England quote this as being due to the decline in energy prices last year, which will fall out of the annual comparison, which I guess kind of correlates back to why we had a fairly low inflation reading month on month compared to this time last year. So it's more of a number manipulation thing rather than the truest inflation rate. So with that in mind, now let's look at the actual inflation numbers because that's what they reference next. Now, instead of just showing you CPI data or consumer price index data, I'm gonna show you something called consumer price index and housing data or CPIH. This includes the cost of housing, which of course is a big real expense for me and you guys. So let's take a look at the headline numbers. CPIH actually sits at a higher inflation rate than CPI at 2.8% versus 2%. And that's due to the continued inflationary pressures associated with housing and household services and owner-occupier housing costs, which are still way above the 2% level. In addition to that, when we compare the price of goods and services, well, actually, the price of goods is negative 1.4% month on month. That's positive for those of you guys spending money on things like clothing and footwear, which, to be honest, are probably more down to summer sales rather than anything else. And we've even seen a slight reduction in the food and non-alcoholic beverages category too. Which, if I'm honest, I can certainly feel that in my weekly food shop. I'm not exactly seeing prices going up literally by the week, as it felt like it was about 12 months ago. And actually, I feel like the weekly food shop has kind of stabilized in terms of cost. But what is a persistent problem is the services inflation rate. We're a service-based economy, so of course that has a major impact on the overall inflation rate that we experience. And service inflation has actually increased from 5.9% to 6% as of last month. And based on current Bank of England projections, it appears that this will remain quite sticky too, which I think is one of the major risk factors for the Bank of England in reducing interest rates too quickly. It's a little bit of a chicken and egg kind of scenario. Inflationary pressures of course cause wages to go up and because businesses have to swallow up those additional costs, which are usually one of the biggest overheads that a business has to face, essentially they then put their prices up to justify those expenses and then we have to pay those increased prices that the businesses are now charging. We can see this a little bit in action with the increase in real wages being at about 3%, which will no doubt be having a kind of secondary or knock-on effect to the overall service inflation rate. But having said all that, that's very much still a focus on the short to medium term because based on current projections, the longer term outlook actually looks largely more positive, which I'm sure all of you guys will be glad to here. With the core inflation rate expecting to stabilise by the end of 2025 and beyond at around that 2% target level. This should hopefully open the floodgates for more confident rate cuts moving forwards which will also filter down to the mortgage market too. Which will certainly be welcome news for me personally with the current two and five year fixed rate mortgages being at around four to 5%. With more rate cuts inevitably due in the future, then those mortgage rates should start to taper down a little bit. But what I will say is I think gone are the days of kind of 1% mortgage rates. And I think based on longer term Bank of England interest rates, that it's likely that we'll possibly stabilize somewhere around three to three and a half percent 
in terms of mortgage rates moving forwards. The other risk factor to consider in all of this is currency valuation. Again, if the Bank of England reduces rates too quickly, it could cause further inflationary pressures due to the impact that it's going to have on the Great British Pound. Today, the currency actually declined six tenths of 1% against the United States dollar since the rate decision came out. This means that anything that we're buying overseas and bringing into the UK essentially is going to cost us more money because our currency is devalued against those other currencies. This could make things like manufacturing, for example, even more expensive than they are right now if we're importing a load of foreign goods, thus increasing costs and therefore prices, which are going to inevitably be paid by me and you. From a political perspective, though, hopefully it might be slightly advantageous, although it still very much is on a knife edge. As the Labour Party have done a complete U-turn on their stance on tax rises, with lower interest rates, the UK government debt levels will be marginally more manageable on the £2.7 trillion worth of debt that we have currently. But having said that, the GDP growth forecasts that the Bank of England have put out are slightly lower than the GDP forecast that Keir Starmer put out where he believed that he would be able to achieve upwards of 2.5% GDP growth rates, which could certainly cause a little bit more of a headache around kind of spending cuts, economic growth, along with the tax rate or tax cut positions too, which are all very much variables that are kind of factored into the government's fiscal plans. All of this is very finely balanced and in my opinion there's still a lot of risk factors to play out and consider here which I think is very much the tone of the Bank of England and as a result I think it will take some time before we slowly transition away from kind of a higher interest rate climate. But I think that will only happen once it's absolutely justified based on a consistent 2% target inflation rate along with positive GDP growth rates too. The Monetary Policy Committee report concludes by saying it's now appropriate to reduce slightly the degree of policy restrictiveness. The impact from past external shocks has abated and there has been some progress in moderating risks of persistence in inflation. However, monetary policy will need to continue to remain restrictive for sufficiently long until the risks to inflation returning sustainably to the 2% target in the medium term have dissipated further. So what do you guys all think of this? Be sure to let me know down in the comments section below.